Thank you very much. Good morning. Good to see you on this beautiful April's morning, the gorgeous day that it is. Special day with lots of nice music and also we have a baptism and um, the, uh, Carrie, um, will be, Carrie Plummer will be baptized here in just a little while in our worship service. We look forward to that. Uh, Paige Nepley was born to Joe and Molly this past week, so congratulations to them and Grandma, um, Grandma Mary and Great Grandma Ruth, so um, they're doing well. But also to uh, Everly Elizabeth was born to Todd and Lisa Spangler and that would be Janice Roars's great grandchild, so congratulations to her. Theo Hoyer is at the hospital in St. Luke's. He's back in St. Luke's. He has an infection. They are running some tests for Theo uh, tomorrow, but please keep him in your prayers if you would. Special prayers for Theo. The kids are invited to come up during, or at the last hymn, uh, during the last hymn to come up and play with the um, with these guys up here. So you're welcome to come up and do that uh, a little bit later. I'll try to remind you as we go along. Are there any other announcements or prayer concerns? It's good to see you one and all. Will you please arise? In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who calls us beloved children, who gathers us into one flock and guides us into all truth. Let us confess our sins, trusting that God will forgive us and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Faithful and just God, we confess that we are captive to doubt and fear, bound by the ways that lead to death. We have not loved our sisters and brothers as you have first loved us. Forgive us, God of mercy. Let your Holy Spirit work in us to change our lives and make us new, that we may know the abundant life given in Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. In this is love, not that we love God, but that God loved us and sent the Son to atone for our sins. In the name of Jesus Christ, I announce to you that your sins are forgiven. Let the perfect love of God cast out fear, fill you with joy, and inspire you to live for others. Amen.
Hallelujah, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Hallelujah. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. O oh God, by the humiliation of your Son, you lifted up this fallen world, rescuing us from the hopelessness of death. Grant your faithful people a share in the joys that are eternal. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen.
Our first reading today is from the third chapter of Acts. When Peter saw it, he addressed the people. You Israelites, why do you wonder at this? Or why do you stare at us? As though by our own power or piety we had made him walk. The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, the God of our ancestors has glorified his servant Jesus, whom you handed over and rejected in the presence of Pilate, though he had decided to release him. But you rejected the holy and righteous one and asked to have a murderer given to you, and you killed the author of life, whom God raised from the dead. To this we are witnesses, and by faith in his name, his name itself has made this man strong, whom you see and know. And the faith that is through Jesus has given him this perfect health in the presence of all of you. And now, friends, I know that you acted in ignorance, as did also your rulers. In this way, God fulfilled what he had foretold through all the prophets, that his Messiah would suffer. Repent, therefore, and turn to God, so that your sins may be wiped out. The word of the Lord. Our second reading today is from the third chapter of 1 John. 
See what love the Father has given us that we should be called children of God, and that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now. What we will be has not yet been revealed. What we do know is this. When he is revealed, we will be like him, for we will see him as he is. And all who have this hope in him purify themselves, just as he is pure. Everyone who commits sin is guilty of lawlessness. Sin is lawlessness. You know that he was revealed to take away sins, and in him there is no sin. No one who abides in him sins. No one who sins has either seen him or known him. Little children, let no one deceive you. Everyone who does what is right is righteous, just as he is righteous. The word of the Lord. according to Luke, recorded in the 24th chapter. Peace be with you. They were startled and frightened and thought that they were seeing a ghost. He said to them, Why are you frightened? And why do doubts arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet and see that it is I myself. Touch me and see. For a ghost does not have flesh and bones as you see that I have. And when he had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. While in their joy they were disbelieving and still wondering, he said to them, Have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish. He took it and ate it in their presence. And then he said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures, and he said to them, Thus it is written that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on a third day, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. The Gospel of our Lord. Will the children please come forward for the children's sermon? We all got to help Kim back up. Yep, we got to. <laughs> I know that feeling well. Hi, you guys. Good morning. How's everyone doing? Good. It's good to see you. We're going to play a game this morning, okay? So the game we're going to play is, first of all, you have to close your eyes. Everyone has to close your eyes. And don't look. You can't cheat. Put your hand over your eyes so you make sure you're not looking. Everyone, keep your hands over your eyes. Keep your hands over your eyes. I wonder if you could tell me what my cross is made of. Don't look yet. Don't look. Anyone know what my cross is made of? 
You want to take a guess? What's your guess? Go ahead and guess. Wood. Wood. That's right. It is made of wood. But go ahead and look now. It's made of wood, but it's, it's clothespins. Isn't that cool? There's some, someone from my former church made this for me. Yeah, it's made of clothespins. Okay, close your eyes again. Close your eyes. What color is the carpet that you're sitting on? You're standing on. Green. Okay, now look. You're right. It was green. Okay, close your eyes again. Close your eyes. How many pipes are there up front for the pipe organ? Like 16. 16? That's a good guess. Anyone else guessing? Nine. Nine? You can, you can look now. There's actually 31. The only reason why I know it is I counted them. There's 31 pipes, yeah. Does that correspond to anything 31 on the organ? No. Okay, I don't, never mind. It doesn't have anything to do with anything. I was just curious. Okay, close your eyes again. Close your eyes. What color is the floor that I'm standing on? Green, gray. Okay, go ahead and look. It is kind of a gray, isn't it? It's a gray blue. It's gray blue. Yeah, I would guess. I would guess it's gray. Okay, close your eyes. Close your eyes. One more. Let's see. What color are the flowers that are on the altar? Oh. Color and. <laughs> like a rainbow. Pink. Yellow. yellow. Any other colors? Red. Red. Okay, you guys can look. They are, they are kind of like a rainbow, and there's pink, this is good, no, I guess that's purple, isn't it? But there's yellow and red, and it is kind of like a rainbow. I think that really, that's good, that covers all of them. The reason why we're playing this game is that sometimes we can notice things and sometimes we don't. Sometimes we see things and sometimes we don't. Jesus says that we are his witnesses, and that's a great big word. It just means we are to tell everyone all about his love. He says, we're the ones who are supposed to do that. We're the witnesses. So he says, I want you to pay close attention, and any time someone needs my love around them, you make sure to tell them how much I love them and that you love them too. You try to show my love in all the ways that you can because we are his witnesses, and that's what it means to be a witness for Jesus. Okay, guys? Okay. Well, thanks a lot for your help here this morning. Make sure you get a children's bulletin before you go back. And we have a baptism coming up. And in honor of that baptism, we have some special music with our baptismal hymn, Born and Cry. And I think Living Spirit's going to sing that for us. <laughs>
you to please come forward for the baptism. As they are doing that, I do have to tell you, um, don't have to tell you, I want to tell you, because it's the absolute truth. I have many privileges um, as an ordained minister. The greatest privilege that I have is presiding over this most holy sacrament. And it's certainly true again this morning. Yeah, a great privilege for me. In holy baptism, our gracious Heavenly Father liberates us from sin and death by joining us to the death and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. We are born children of a fallen humanity. In the waters of baptism, we are reborn children of God and inheritors of eternal life. By water and Holy Spirit, we are made members of the church, which is the body of Christ. As we live with him and with his people, we grow in faith, love, and obedience to the will of God. I present Carrie William Plummer to receive the sacrament of holy baptism. In Christian love, you presented this child for holy baptism. You should therefore faithfully bring him to the services of God's house, teach him the Lord's Prayer, the Creed, the Ten Commandments. As he grows in years, you should place in his hands the Holy Scriptures. Provide for his instruction in the Christian faith, that living in the covenant of his baptism and in communion with the church, he may lead a godly life until the day of Jesus Christ. Do you promise to fulfill these obligations? I do. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Holy God, mighty Lord, gracious Father, we give you thanks for in the beginning your spirit moved over the waters and you created heaven and earth. By the gift of water you nourish and sustain us in all living things. By the waters of the flood you condemned the wicked, save those whom you had chosen, Noah and his family. You led Israel by a pillar of cloud and fire through the sea, out of slavery into the freedom of the promised land. In the waters of the Jordan, your son was baptized by John and anointed with the Spirit. By the baptism of his own death and resurrection, your beloved son has set us free from the bondage to sin and death and has opened the way to the joy and freedom of everlasting life. He made water a sign of the kingdom and of cleansing and rebirth. In obedience to his command, we make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Pour out your Holy Spirit so that he who is here baptized may be given new life. Wash away the sin of him who is cleansed by this water. Bring him forth as an inheritor of your glorious kingdom. To you be given praise, honor, and worship through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. I ask you to profess your faith in Christ Jesus, to reject sin, confess the faith of the church, the faith in which we baptize. Do you renounce all the forces of evil, the devil and his empty promises? I do. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in God the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Carrie William Plummer, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we give you thanks for freeing your sons and daughters from the power of sin and raising them up to a new life through this holy sacrament. Pour out your Holy Spirit upon Carrie, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, 
the spirit of knowledge and fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence. Amen. Carrie, child of God, you have been sealed by the Holy Spirit and marked with the cross of Christ forever. Amen. Amen. Let your light so shine before others that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. Let us pray. O oh God, the giver of all life, look with kindness upon Brian and Dia. Let them ever rejoice in the gift you have given them. Make them teachers and examples of righteousness for their children. Strengthen them in their own baptism so that they may share eternally with their children the salvation you have given them through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Through baptism, God has made this new brother a member of the priesthood we all share in Christ Jesus, that we may proclaim the praise of God and bear his creative and redeeming word to all the world. We welcome you into the Lord's family. We receive you as a fellow member of the body of Christ, child of the same Heavenly Father, and worker with us in the kingdom of God. Amen. mercy and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and our Savior Jesus Christ and that sacrament never ceases to amaze me I've read of and I have heard survivors of death camps from World War II say what kept them alive during that time of horror was that they needed to be witnesses to what had happened they needed to survive to tell the world you are my witnesses, Jesus says. Witnesses of what, exactly? And we testify to what, exactly? 
You know how when you're a kid, if you, um, everything seems to be so big, if you go back to those places, we've all experienced that, and the place doesn't seem to be so big after all, you know that feeling? I was young once, I hear people say, I was young once, don't tell me, I was a teenager once. Yeah, even though that was 20, 30, 40, 50, 60 years ago, do you really remember what it was like to be a teenager? I don't think so. No offense. Once you're out of your teens, you don't remember what it was like to be a teenager. You may think you do. You may remember parts of what it was like. You remember little bits and pieces here and there. But do you remember what that feeling was like being a teenager? No, you do not. Just as teenagers do not remember what it was like being five years old. We don't remember exactly, we remember bits and pieces. We are not good witnesses even to our own past. Looking back on the things that happened to us in our past, trying to recall them, we are not going to get them 100% correct, either downplay them or embellish them. In catechism classes, I will always uh, do this routine and sometime during the class, I will stop and I will say, okay, take out a piece of paper and a pencil and write down everything you have experienced so far in this classroom, just from this day. From the time I walked in, tell me what has happened. And guess what? Of all the kids who answer it, guess how many different answers I get? <laughs> They're all different, every single one of them. Now how can you have a bunch of kids experience the exact same thing and say totally different things? because we are different witnesses. Just like the four Gospels are all different. Basically the same, but they're different witnesses to this great truth of Jesus. It always, uh, I think it's amusing in a kind of a sad way that people, whenever there's a mass murder or someone who commits some kind of horrible crime and they go around talking to the neighbors. That one just kills me in the first place. I don't know what the neighbors are going to say. But they always talk to the neighbors, and the neighbors will say, well, no, it's such, so strange. I mean, he was such a nice man. I would see him out mowing his grass, and he would wave to me, and he was always nice when I saw him. I just can't believe this. As if seeing someone mow their grass tells you all about them. Which, by the way, if it does, it tells um, you about me. I almost wrecked my wife's lawnmower. So, <laughs> Actually, it does say a lot about me. I'll tell you the truth, but that's okay. Why in the world do we think we know someone? Because we watch them mow the grass. And what do you really know about one another? What do we really know about Jesus? So what do we proclaim about him? There was a rock and roll group uh, back in the 80s called 38 Special. And they had a song, and part of the lyrics goes like this, hold on loosely, but don't let go. If you cling too tightly, you're gonna lose control. You know what we do with our faith sometimes? You have to cling to your faith. I believe very strongly in clinging to your faith. But sometimes we cling straw so strongly to what we think we believe and know that we don't see the new things Christ is doing. We're only witnesses to this one thing, but we don't see him at work other places. Faith is a tricky thing. There was a guy who went to his doctor, he said, I keep thinking I'm God. The doctor said, when did this start? And the guy said, well, I think it was right after I created the sun and the moon. Somewhere right in there. We think we know so much God stuff. We think we understand and we think we understand the Son, Jesus, really. How much of the love of Christ do you think you really understand? On a scale of one to 10, let's do the nurses thing. How much love of Christ do you truly understand? We are called to bear witnesses to what we know. The trouble is, is what do we know? And what do we think we know? Sometimes I always, well, I always wonder, how much do you have to know about something before you know about that thing? Now that sounds like kind of a silly thing, but st stop and think about it. How much do you really have to know about something before you know it? How much do you have to know about someone before you really know them? 
Just have to know one thing about them. Does that tell you? They mow their grass, they're a nice person. How much do you have to know about someone before you really know that person? Like looking at the ocean. Do you really know the ocean? Anybody here know the ocean? You can look at it. Well, I know the ocean now. Or seeing documentaries, or maybe if you were swimming, scuba diving, now you know the ocean. I don't think so. There are parts of the ocean no human being has ever visited. So do you know the ocean? Not really. We are still in a process of learning. In the world of judicial, judicial law, they have what they call hostile witnesses. And I believe that we at times are hostile witnesses. We are hostile witnesses to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We don't want to do it willingly at times. Sometimes yes, sometimes not yes. And we're hostile witnesses. But you know what? Jesus uses what Jesus has. Even when we are hostile. I don't really think forgiving you is going to do anything. I don't think really loving you is going to do anything. I guess if I have to, I'll try. And on and on we go. There's a wife who asked her husband, uh, why haven't you been playing golf with Clarence? And the guy said, well, would you want to play golf with someone who curses all the time and swears all the time? And I mean, he swears and he cheats and he always complains all the time. And his wife said, well, no, I wouldn't. He said, well, neither would Clarence. <laughs> I, uh, one of my new campaigns is humility. I, I mean, not for my own, believe <laughs> me, yeah. Everybody's humility. I think it's such a crucial thing, humility is. I used to think it was an important factor in being a Christian, but I don't think it's just an important factor anymore. I think it has to be at the very foundation of faith. And if it's not there, I don't see how we can possibly follow Christ. How do I like those apples? True humility. Truly understanding our own failures, our own sins. Truly understanding that no one else on the face of this earth is really any worse than we are. My mom, when we were little, used to tell us, uh, she used to always say, remember, she said, there is no one who's any better than you are. And we would feel so, that's right, no one is. And she'd say, and you're no better than anyone else. My own mother told me that. <laughs> and doggone it, she was right. Absolutely on target. Humility is no strong, small thing. I was at a meeting uh, with pastors. Uh, pastors aren't always the most humble people in the world, and um, if any of you found that, a lot of them are blow bags. There's no pastor here, is there? <laughs> any pastor here, you're excluded. Pastors can be big blow bags, and um, yeah, I, would, I go, uh, we had 874 people at our church last week, and we're building a brand new building, and pastors kind of, that kind of they drive me crazy. Anyway, I was at his pastor's meeting, um, and this guy was there, and he, he was being a real blow bag, and I was talking to him, and I looked over on his name tag. They had a name tag, and then where you're from. He was from Columbus. Uh, anyway, you're from Columbus? Okay. <laughs> Anyway, uh, he was from a big church in Columbus, and uh, I had my, my name tag at the time. I was living in Arcanum, so it had my name in Arcanum, Ohio. And he uh, was being his kind of blow baggy, and, and he came over to me. He said, uh, Arcanum, Arcanum, let's see. Uh, I, don't, I have no idea where that is. And I told him, well, it's a little north of Dayton, you know, around. And, oh, oh. I looked at his, and I said, Columbus, Columbus, is it? Isn't that city between Cleveland and Cincinnati? Isn't that one in there? I think you sort of got the point. Sort of not. Anybody know Ernie Pyle? Ernie Pyle was a, a great war correspondent. Ernie Pyle said that we shouldn't gloat with our victory. I'll read you his exact quote. He used to write these columns all the time for newspapers, and he was eventually, he was shot by a sniper. This was during World War II, and he was killed by a sniper. This is one of the columns he wrote just before he was actually killed, and as the war was winding down, we were winning, the Allies were. 
And he wrote, we did not win it, the war, because destiny created us to be better than all peoples. I hope that in victory we are more than grateful than proud, that we are more grateful than proud. I hope we can rejoice in victory, but with great humility. The dead men would not want us to gloat. Our crucified and risen Lord and Savior would not want us to gloat. Um, I love movies. There was a movie called Ordinary People made by Robert Redford. I strongly suggest it. It was a great film in many different ways. Anyway, at one point in this movie, the husband and wife are having a strong disagreement. Won't go into all that. But at one point he tells her, he says, can't you see beyond yourself? And she says, no, I can't. And neither can you. And neither can anybody else. I'm just honest. And he looks at her with this great line. He says, well, stop being so honest and start being generous. So stop it with your being so honest about things. It's not the truth anyway. It's just your perception of it. And start being generous, as our Lord is generous. My buddy Oli and Sven, they went uh, hunting in the Canadian wilderness. They got two big bull moose, and a plane landed to pick them up to bring them home. The pilot said he could only take uh, the hunters back and their gear and just one of the moose. One of them had to be left behind. And Oli started arguing with him. He said, well, last year we shot two moose as big as D's, and that pilot took us, and he had, his plane was no bigger than yours. And they argued back and forth, back and forth, and finally the pilot agreed to take them with their two moose. The plane took off, it couldn't handle the load, it crashed. Now thankfully no one was injured, and Oli was talking, and he said, um, uh, Sven asked him, he said, where are we? And Oli said, I think we're about the same place where we crashed last year. <laughs> They're not only eyewitnesses to a crash, they experienced it and still they learned nothing. And those of you who think because you have a lot of experience about something that makes you an expert on things, I'm sorry, no it does not. <laughs> not necessarily. Just because we experience things doesn't mean we learn the right things from them. We sometimes do, we sometimes don't. It depends. It depends on what we have learned. Jesus does not call us because he thinks we are expert witnesses to the gospel. He knows better. He knows we're somewhat hostile witnesses. He calls us as we are because he needs us. With these accents, these heavy accents that we have. The older I get, I really do believe the less I know, and I don't just say that um, in humility. It's the absolute truth. I mean, does anybody else feel that way too? The older I get, the less I feel I truly know. It's not because of senility either, although I may have that, or that it's a wacky world. I just thought I knew so much at one point, and I know, realize I know less and less and less the more I learn. Things change too, you know, because of our age. Uh, I mean, for instance, I used to sort of want a BMW, you know, and you can leave off the W now. I'm happy just with the. <laughs> <laughs> things change. We witness to more and more things. Every day we either testify to the risen Lord and Savior Jesus Christ or we speak on behalf of the world. We speak on behalf of the world when we say there is no hope, when we want to give up. We speak on behalf of Christ when we say there are possibilities of change in everything and in everyone. We speak on behalf of the world when we say I deserve everything I have, it's mine, keep your hands off. We speak on behalf of Christ when we say it's a gift from God in the first place and needs to be shared. We speak on behalf of the world when we say I'm just a perfectionist. I just want things to be right. And we speak on behalf of Christ when we say there are no perfectionists. There are only people who want things their way. 
We speak on behalf of the world when we say, I know enough. We speak on behalf of Christ and we say, I need to learn so much more about you, about your needs, about this world, even about myself. I need to learn so much more about him. And so we are called to testify. And when you leave these doors, it's like going into a courtroom. You're going out there to testify. Whether you like it or not, that's what you're going to be doing. And on whose behalf? This is what Jesus says. You are my witnesses, he says. Amen.
confident that the resurrection of Christ has defeated sin and death, we offer our prayers for the church, the world, and all people in need. For the church and its leaders, for those who witness to the risen Christ through speech or action, and for all the children of God that let all be led to joy in the resurrection, let us pray. For stewards of creation, for farmers planting and ranchers tending to livestock, that the bounty of the earth provide for all who hunger or thirst, let us pray. For those who work to keep us safe, police officers and firefighters, military and international peacekeepers, local and national leaders, that God's peace and compassion come to us, let us pray. For this assembly, where the scriptures have been opened in our midst, that with boldness of heart we proclaim the joy we have in our new life in Christ, let us pray. In thanksgiving for the witnesses of the faith who have died and are now at rest, that with them we have hope in the promises of the author of life, let us pray. For the distressed, rejected, bereaved, sick, and frightened, for all those who have a special need today, we include in those prayers Tessa Rhodes, Todd Miller, Kendall Berkey, Lucy Zwiebel, Sarah Lenhart, and Brent Leiter, Alice Lanenhop, Marlene Kreider, Len Colby, and Carly Knowles, Fred Close, Lucas King, Joshua Jenny, Alexa Jennings, Richard Hoover, Landon Zunk, Bill Winsman, Andrew Williams, Colleen Cable, Lois Weekers, Dick Brown, Sandy Bosseman, and Gary Weaver, Jeff Warner, Beth Jenny, and Russ Van Meter, for Ted Titkenmeyer, Brent Thompson, KT, Roman Strom, Lottie Soifer, Melanie Simpson, and Deb Schenk, Ron Roth, Lucas Rosebrook, Robert Plassman, Carrie Robbins, and Teresa Ray. For Cole Spangler, Denelda Roars, Mary Rohrball, Naomi Rhodes, and Lois Plotz, Valerie, Arlita Panning, Don, Donna Norton, Jeff Brown, Nor Brandt, and Cass Bolton. For Jamie Bosselman, Dave and Betty Meyer, Art and Leota Pedraza, and Alfred and Rita Priggy. For Tom and Eleanor Morgan, Bob and Esther Denny, and Don and Susan Dravis. We pray for Linda, Miranda Schenk, Jackie, Chris Schmidt-Meyer, and Josh Bates. Hop. For Susan Allen, George and Cindy Pope, Paul Cousineau, Irene Cordes, and Kim Corder. For Pat Badenhop, Becky, Amos Showman, Audrey Schrader, and Kelly Troyer. For Betty Mallory, Pat Degler, Steve Close, Shirley Myers Vages, and Emma Myers. We pray for Arlene Miller, Paul Panning, Bonnie Palamara, Alice Oberhaus, Millie Miller, and Caden Michaelis. For Mary Brown, Eileen Maybe, Linda Lofts, Ken Ludeman, and Amber Lucas. Mary Lou Zwiebel, Paul Long, and Roma Brown. For Linda Hill, Allie Gray Small, Kelly Garst, and Crystal Garcia, Eleanor Engler, and Rudy Eikhoff. For Marjorie Downs, Terry Dota, Sandy Borsman, Jeannie Curtis, Dustin Brown, Lorna Bosseman, Louisa Bevel, and Josh Bevel, for Carol Berlin, Tom Badenhop, and all those we name now in our hearts. That support for them be close at hand, that all experience the gift of healing. Let us pray. We pray, Heavenly Father, for those in our congregational family who will be celebrating their birthdays in this coming week. Those people include Ruth Eikhoff, Laverne Lanzer, Hugh Schenk, Caden Jones, Alice Oberhaus, Joe Dilbone, Doug Elling, Kim Jenkins, Carolyn Schmidlin, Kathy Sonnenberg, Jennifer Wade, Ryan Cruz, Bill Panning and Neil Storch, Anthony Weiss and Brock Brubaker and Deb Wyrock. We pray on their anniversaries for Jeff and Terry Hayes, Norm and Sue Cruz, and Matt and Katie Diem. We also pray for those serving in the military from this our congregation and this our country, including Hunter Carnahan, Henry Elling, Jessica Reed, Tyler Hayes and Mike Dimache. Be with them all and bless them and keep them in your heavenly grace. Holy God, by the death and resurrection of your Son, you have granted new life, abundant renewal, and salvation. Hear our prayers for the sake of the one who has set us free, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. 
Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Again, the children are invited to come up uh, now and sing the last hymn or play their instruments with the choir. So if the kids want to come forward, please come forward to do that. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine on you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord look upon you with his favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.